Hey y'all, welcome to the Draper Bunch Adventures. My name is Carol. If this is your first time with us today, we would love for you to subscribe to our channel. If you are returning, we are so glad that you came back and please give us a big thumbs up to let us know you were here today. If you haven't clicked on the bell for notifications, make sure you do that so you'll get notified when we have new content. So if you've learned anything about our family so far, you know we love Disney cruising and we also are on an adventure of homeschooling in our house. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about um, the curriculum that we're using for our daughter Ella. Ella is nine years old and has an October birthday, so by public school standards that puts her in third grade. She is quite advanced in many ways and so definitely keep that in mind as I'm sharing the curriculum with you that we have today. Um, I would like to share a little bit about my philosophy with elementary school students and subjects such as science and social studies before we delve into the curriculum so that you can kind of get an idea of the perspective that I'm coming from. I learned a long time ago having a background in education specifically working with elementary kids and um, dealing with the different subject areas that really in the elementary years it's my philosophy that kids need exposure and interest in science and social studies meaning that it's great to expose them to science and social studies and history and, and show them all those things, but they don't necessarily master or understand it completely because it can be very abstract concepts, which is why they get a repeat of a lot of it later on. So to me, it's more about exposure and building an interest in those areas and letting them pursue the, the topics that they're interested in than it is about mastery of learning for science and social studies. I'm a firm believer that elementary schools should focus on reading and math as fundamentals and it's very important that our kids have a solid foundation in that because it leads to so many other things and it really is reading especially is a solid foundation for them to be able to perform well in science and social studies so we focus heavily on language arts and math and we do a lot of activities and fun stuff with science and social studies as time allows and I'll discuss that more when I get into the materials that I use but let's get started. So for math for Ella we use teaching textbooks. If you saw my ninth grade curriculum video you saw that I'm a big fan of teaching textbooks and we also use it for our high school son as well. Um, teaching textbooks is extremely user friendly so that's one of the reasons why I love it. I also feel that it is very thorough in covering the material that needs to be covered. One of the things I mentioned in my last video is that scope and sequence is very important when you're looking at a curriculum for your children because the scope and sequence for a curriculum will tell you what they're going to learn and the order that they're going to learn it in. And if you kind of have an idea of what your kids already know and what they need to sort of learn next, then looking at the scope and sequence will help you determine if that curriculum is right for you maybe or it may make you mark that curriculum off your list because maybe it's just not quite what you're looking for. So I know that teaching textbooks specifically has um, table of contents for each of their levels online so you can look at that. That will be helpful to you. But the other nice thing about teaching textbooks is on their website they have um, a button on the left hand side of the screen when you go on the website kind of close to the bottom that says placement. So if you click on that it will lead you to placement tests for each of their levels. You can print those out and give them to your child and it gives you the guideline and the answer key and everything. And it will help you determine the proper placement for your child in their different levels of math. So for Ella last year, she did the placement test for Math 3, even though she was in second grade and she was able to pass that placement test. So she completed Math 3 last year and this year she is completing Math 4. So even though by school standards she's in third grade, she's really in Math 4 for teaching textbooks because it was the right fit for her. And we should always try to make sure that we choose what's the right fit for our kids so that they're not repeating things they already know and have already mastered and they can just keep moving forward because that's what's most important. So I like this curriculum because it's very well laid out. It comes with, there are two versions. There's the 2.0 version, which is what I have. There's the 3.0 version. The 3.0 O version is online. That's something new that Teaching Textbooks recently started and it is all online and because of that we opted to stick with the 2.0 version because we live in a rural area and the internet is spotty at best so we decided to stick with paper and pencil for this particular curriculum. 
the content in 2.0 and 3.0 is the same. So there's no, there's no difference in the scope and sequence. They're exactly the same. It's just a difference in having a book and CD-ROMs versus just doing it all online. And we prefer the books and the CD-ROMs. So it does come with the textbook and with the CD-ROMs and there is a teacher answer key, which I don't have here with me, but they, it does come with a teacher answer key as well. So the nice thing about this program is that it has a table of contents in the front. And you can see table of contents there. Um, it's laid out into lessons and then there are quizzes at the end of so many lessons. There's a quiz on the material that's been covered. Um, the kids, when they get ready to do a lesson, they just go into the computer. You will have created a login for them. They log in and they can click on which lesson. If they're on lesson 48, they click on lesson 48. They click on lecture and the computer will teach the lecture or the skill for that day, the lesson and then they'll complete the problems that go along with it. So it's really user friendly, really easy. I like the fact that they don't give 45 math problems in one lesson. It's fairly comprehensive in that they give four or five practice problems and then a set of about 20 additional problems to do. So it's not too time consuming. It's pretty, um, pretty independent. The kids can work pretty independently with it on their own. And the other thing I like about it is it does grade as you go. So you don't have to keep up with the grades. The computer grades them as they go. Also, if they miss a question and get the answer wrong, they have the opportunity to click and have the computer show them how to do the problem. So I love that immediate reinforcement, that immediate reteaching, that immediate opportunity for kids to see, oops, this is what I did wrong. This is what I need to do differently next time. So it's really great for them to have that kind of on the spot correction um, so that they can figure out what their mistake was that time. So this curriculum is, like I said, very user friendly. I love it. There are placement tests online. Um, it's pretty all inclusive and it is also a spiral curriculum. So it teaches a skill and then it had the problems are mixed problems. They're problems of things of the new skill that they learned and then some things that they've already learned. And each lesson is like that building one upon the other. So it's really nice because it really helps them master the math skills. So I can't say enough great things about teaching textbooks. I will leave links below to everything that I can. So definitely check out teaching textbooks if you're looking for a math curriculum. Our kids um, love this math curriculum and I will say she's advanced and um, my ninth grader is average. So for them, it, it hasn't mattered because they take the placement test and they just start where they are. So it doesn't matter if they're a little bit more advanced or average or maybe a little bit behind even if they are, it doesn't matter. If, as long as you take the placement test, then teaching textbooks moves at a nice pace. It's not too quick. So it's nice for the kids to be able to make sure that they master as they go. So that's my plug for teaching textbooks. Okay, let's talk about language arts. It's a little bit more difficult at this age. Um, a little bit trickier with Ella because she's in a, a very advanced reader. She does love to read. She reads a lot for pleasure. So getting her to read is definitely not a problem. Two of her favorite book series are Little House on the Prairie and also Harry Potter. So we've only let her read the first three Harry Potter books because of her age. However, I'm sure that she will read the others as she gets older and is allowed to. Um, so I use a combination of things for language arts. I will tell you that we started our year trying to use the good and the beautiful language arts for her. I know a lot of people enjoy that curriculum. It was not a good fit for us. It was not a good fit for her and it was not a good fit for my teaching style. I did not enjoy that curriculum very much and I didn't feel like we were able to get everything we needed to get out of it. Um, so definitely at some point maybe I'll do a review on that curriculum just in a separate video because I think it would be worth a separate video. I know a lot of people do enjoy it and I do use part of that curriculum with my younger daughter so I'm not saying that it doesn't have great strengths but for us it wasn't a good fit in language arts for Ella. So I'll start with, um, we like Abeka a lot. Abeka curriculum is very traditional. It, um, one of the complaints people have about it is that it has a lot of seat work, a lot of worksheets, a lot of busy work. And that is true. It does have a lot of that. However, it is very good at the early primary grades of teaching reading, language art skills, and math skills. 
So, and I will talk more about Abeka when I talk, when I do a curriculum video for my youngest child. But in Ella's case, she actually loves Abeka and she doesn't mind the seat work. What I will say to you and what I'd like to say right now in this moment is remember that you're always in charge of your kid's education. And so unless you enroll in the academy program where you're having to report and send in papers to be graded and things like that, you're in charge of how much of the seat work they do. We've never enrolled in anything like that. I've always done it all independently in our house on our own because I like to be in control of how fast we move or how slow we move. I like to be able to look at the page and say, okay, there's 40 addition problems, but you only need to do these 20 because they're the ones I'm not sure you know how to do. So just remember that you get to choose. Just because a curriculum has four worksheets in a day doesn't mean you have to do all four of those. You pick and choose which things you think are most valuable to your child's learning and those are the ones that you do. So we do we do use some Abeka pieces for Ella's language arts. We don't solely use Abeka, but we do use the pieces. I don't necessarily um, use the teacher's guide in the in some these I mean I take suggestions out of there but I'm I'm very kind of loose with how I use it and and picking and choosing for her what I want her to do. So this is one of the books that I do like from the Abeka third grade. It's a reading comprehension book and it just has um different types of stories, paragraphs, um ads in it. I don't know if you can see that or not. And then it has all different types of comprehension questions and literary questions in it. Sometimes it'll have puzzles. Um, I was trying to find something. So, so sometimes it'll have like a crossword puzzle. <clears throat> Hopefully you can see that. And then other times it has specific questions where they have to circle answers or write out answers. I'm peeking around the corner so I can make sure that you can see it. Um, so I really like this book because it's a, it's a quick way to help her develop stronger reading comprehension skills, considering that she's already very advanced in that area. She, like I said, loves to read on her own. She's constantly telling us all about what she's reading in her books and they're books that we've read. So we know that she's accurate in her details. And so we just want to develop and hone in those reading comprehension skills. And this book is great because it's just a quick little read every day and a few questions, and it just kind of helps keep her moving forward in that. Um, another Abeka book that I really like is the Grammar and Writing. We do not use this exclusively. I do like it, but it is a lot of seat work, but it has great activities for learning about run-on sentences and conjunctions and things like that. So, Grammar is not something that I think students have to master at the elementary level necessarily. I think they really will learn more from the way that we speak to them and, and by exposure to reading, they get good exposure to what proper sentence structure is like in books. And so they learn a lot just from what they hear and what they read and their interactions with adults. Um, I think they need exposure to it, but again, it may not necessarily be something they master at the elementary level, and it's not necessary for them to master it at the elementary level. Once they get into junior high and high school, then it's it's definitely important to focus on that. But at the elementary level, it's an exposure thing, and they're going to get a lot of exposure just by the way we speak to them and their conversations with us and then the material that they read as well. Most often, children write the way they speak. So if they're learning to speak properly, then they will do better in their writing. So we use this. We don't use it every day. We don't use it exclusively, but we use it just as kind of a review and introducing new things, and it works in that way. Um, for spelling, I like the Abeka spelling. This says spelling and poetry. We do not use the poetry piece of it. Again, pick and choose what's right for you. So it gives a list of words. Um, this is third grade. There are 20 words. There are 17 words to spell and then three additional words to spell that are also vocabulary words for them to learn the meaning of. And the book just has little activities in it for them to do. Um, you kind of get a little bit of an idea. I'm sorry, that may not be the best way to show you that, but it has different activities where it has them break up compound words or talk about the contractions if there are words that meet certain rules. It teaches a new rule every week. Um, so like silent E at the end of a word, 
and spelling rules like that. So it teaches them rules. Um, Ella actually likes to write and so she'll do the activities in the book and then she practices writing the words three times each just because she likes to do that. So there are a lot of ways that you can use this. There are a lot of spelling activities that you can do. One of the things that I like to do for tactile learners is take the words and write them on an index card and cut them apart and then have it like a puzzle where they put it back together to spell the word correctly. Also, if you have any little alphabet tiles, sometimes you can find those at the dollar store. If you can buy several sets of those so you have plenty of vowels and plenty of extra letters to use for double letters and words, but you can definitely use those and scramble the words and have them unscramble it. So there are a lot of different ways you can teach spelling. She's very traditional and just kind of enjoys the traditional writing them three times each. Um, but there are a lot of other activities you could do as well with this. So we, Abeka, Abeka language, and then Abeka reading comprehension here. Um, she has her own little spelling notebook that she likes to write in and this is where she writes the words three times each. This year we have discovered Fix-It Grammar, which I talked about in my last video with ninth grade and I started using it late in the year and I do mean like in the last couple of months with Ella. Um, it really, I think they suggest starting it in fourth grade, but I went ahead and started a little bit of it with her now and then we'll finish the, f there are six books to Fix-It Grammar. So this is book one. I started book one with her. We did some of it and we'll we'll do the rest of it next year. So she's just kind of ahead of the game a little bit. Um, I really like this as a comprehensive grammar program. This is by IEW, Institute for Excellence in Writing. And they also have a writing program, which I talked about in my ninth grade video as well. And so Ella will be starting level A of their writing program next year. And the nice thing is, is that their writing program and their fix-it grammar parallel each other. So when you're covering one topic here, it's going to parallel over into the writing as well. It's nice because they just mesh so well together and they work really well together. I can't recommend IEW products highly enough. They're extremely successful in teaching kids about grammar and writing. I did not realize they had a grammar program, but I love it because it... <clears throat> So in the beginning of each week, it teaches a new skill. You can see this one's the, like the first week, so nouns and things like that. And then at the bottom of each day, I'm trying to find one to show you. At the, at the bottom of, so here's week two, it teaches articles. And then at the bottom of the page, it tells you day one, day two, day three, day four, what to do. So on day one, they learn the skill and they, on the next page, they have sentences to correct and it's just a sentence per day. So they learn the skill on day one, they correct the first sentence, they rewrite the sentence in a separate notebook. On days two through four, they correct the, the remaining sentences, one sentence each day. and they write them in the notebook. Each day they also have a highlighted vocabulary word which they define and they write in their notebook. So they learn the skill and they apply it over the course of the four days by picking out the nouns and articles or whatever it is they're having them do in a sentence each day, defining a vocabulary word, and then at the end of the week they rewrite that portion that they have corrected for the week. And as they go through the book, they'll end up having an entire story. So it's really nice because it's it doesn't take a lot of time to do, but it's very effective in teaching and reinforcing and practicing the skills that they're learning. So we really enjoy the Fix-It Grammar. I highly recommend looking into that if you are looking for something for grammar. Um, I would also say that if you feel like that's I feel like this program is good for kids that may struggle with grammar or kids that maybe are really, really good at grammar. I think it's good for both. That's just my opinion, but I think it's good for both. And then of course we just bought her a spiral bound notebook where she rewrites this, she writes the vocabulary words and definitions and it's one vocabulary word per day and a definition. And then she rewrites the sentences in her notebook. She's my messy handwriting. She's my, she's my child that has messy handwriting. So, but we're working on it. So that's what we use 
primarily for language arts. I'm going to talk about our social studies program in a minute and it has a literature component to it as well. So that also crosses into our language arts. So those are the things that we do for language arts. We use a Becca, um, loosely use a Becca. We don't follow it to the letter of the law. We use fix it grammar for IEW and those things have worked very well for us. And then for pleasure reading, I just let her choose whatever she wants to read because as I said before, um, she probably has an entire bookstore full of books in her room. She loves to read, so getting her to pleasure read is not, not a difficult task at all. She really enjoys reading. So now moving on to social studies and science. Those are the two that I told you that I feel like exposure is key and letting them pursue their interests is key. And so we don't necessarily do these subjects every day. We do them a couple of three times a week, maybe depending on our schedule and depending on what's going on, depending on what we're learning. So I'm just going to share the materials that we bought with you and tell you a little bit about them and then you can determine if they're right for you. So again, in my last video, I told you that I love Not Grass History. They just came out with an elementary, early elementary curriculum called Our Star Spangled Story. This is one of the student books. There are two student books and <clears throat> it also has a literature component with it. Um, it is divided into units and each unit has three lessons. So it's, it's sort of divided up that way if I remember correctly when I was reading in the beginning when we first got it so that you don't do all of one at one time. It's kind of a lot of material and for younger kids they might lose interest and, and attention pretty quickly. So it does, you know, the way we did it because we have two younger kids is I just would take the day's lesson and read it to them and we at the end of I was trying to find at the end it gives lesson activities and questions at the end um, I would pick and choose from those which ones I wanted to ask and what I wanted to do as far as the activities were concerned and we would just go from there so it has two student textbooks. We have not finished this curriculum. Like I said, it's an elementary curriculum, so we'll be using it again next year, and we'll just probably make like a two-year curriculum out of it. Um, my youngest was having a little bit more of a difficult time understanding sort of what was going on, but again, as I said, this can be very abstract concepts for little kids, so it's okay. We just kind of kept going and let her get what she can out of it, and she'll see it again, so it doesn't matter. So there, like I said, there are two student textbooks for that. We bought one set and we're sharing it just because I'm reading the material to them. Though Ella is old enough to read it herself because we were including her younger sister, we just decided to do it as a group activity instead. So we would read the material in here. Sometimes in those readings, it would have it would send you to two of the other books that come with it, which are Rhythms and Rhymes. Or it also comes with a timeline book. So it would have you go into the timeline. It would show you different pictures and facts from the timeline. I'm sorry. I'm really trying to hold this in a good spot for you to see. Um, so those two books also come with the package as well. I can't remember if, it, if these items are sold separately or not. I think maybe they are, but we just bought the whole package with everything in it. So the next piece is the student workbook. It has an activity for each day. Some of the activities are more simplistic, like drawing. And then sometimes it's fill in the blank. So some of the activities are a little more complex for younger students. Again, they may need a little bit more help. If you have a kid that doesn't like to draw, again, that's where I say you're in control. If your child doesn't like to draw, you can either create some alternate activity for them to do or just let them skip it. It's really, you know, it really doesn't matter. So it's one of the nice things about being able to homeschool is that they don't have to draw in color if it's not something that they're interested in doing. Um, the other piece is that it comes with an answer key and a literature guide. So this answer key answers all the questions in the student workbook and then it has a literature guide. I'm going to show you the literature in just a second that comes with this program and it gives you comprehension questions to ask as you're reading the literature with the children. They are all chapter books, and so we were using them as read-alouds. We have not read them all. We've only done some. So, again, we will finish it next year. But um, it does give questions that you can ask along the way here, too. So, those are the components for that. It does come with a set of literature, and the books are directly related to the time period in history that they're talking about in the 
textbook. So here are the books in order. I'm just going to go through them really quickly so you can just get a sense of what literature goes with this program. You could choose to use it or not if you don't want to. It's up to you. Um, Benjamin West and his cat Grimlikin is the first book. Tolliver's Secret. Freedom Crossing. Farmer Boy, which of course Ella loves because she loves all the Little House on the Prairie books. Mountain Born. Emily's Runaway Imagination. The Year of Miss Agnes. And Katie. So that's quite a lot of literature that comes with the program. Again, I did it as read aloud since I was using it with two kids. One of the nice things about this curriculum is you can use it with multiple ages. So again, not grass, very user friendly, very easy to follow, very much an open and go type of curriculum. There are some of the lesson activities and things that need some extra materials that you might want to look ahead for, but you could, you don't have to do all of those. Certainly I wouldn't try to do everything included in here. It is a lot otherwise. Um, so I love it because it's very flexible. You can use it for what you want. So that's what we did for social studies. Lastly, and certainly not least, is science, which um, Ella is particularly interested in. We did not buy a science curriculum. We used all-in-one homeschool, which is Easy Peasy Homeschool online. I'll leave a link to that below. We use that um, just using their daily activities on there. They have a lot of good exposure to a lot of science concepts and, and some little online activities and games that kind of are linked to it, so it makes it really fun. We also have a subscription to something called Brain Pop Junior. It's something I used when I was teaching, and there are just great little videos for and activities for all different types of social studies and science concepts. So it's a little bit pricey, so it might not be something that you're interested in, but it's something, something that's a really good resource if you are interested in it. Again, I'll leave a link below for that as well. The other thing that we like are um, the Magic School Bus kits called the Young Scientist Club. Um, this is kit 15. I, can't, I bought them when my son was in elementary school so I don't remember how often they come maybe you get to choose I don't really remember I'm sorry but they're great little kits they come all inclusive I'll take it out and show you they come all inclusive the kit is um, contains any science like materials that you might need that might not be commonly be able to be found somewhere um, and then it, sometimes you have to have household items to go with it. This might take a little advanced prep work because some of the items are things that you might not just have lying around always. These activities are so fun for the kids and just really pretty easy to do. So this one is all about acids and bases and it has all the different experiments in it. It has an instruction guide that tells you all the materials you'll need. It's very explicit in telling you what to do and what to say to the children to make sure that they're getting the terminology they need to get. It gives a lot of facts and information in it about asses and bases, and it uses this cute little bug to kind of help teach about it. Um, in this particular kit, some of the things that they included that you might have more difficulty finding would be pH paper, um, litmus paper, the dropper, um, so those types of things are included in here and then to give you an idea of some of the household items it asks for, it asks for half a red cabbage, vinegar, cola, water, baking soda, lemon. So some of those things might be things you might not readily have available. So you, if you were going to use, you know, like one kid a week or something, you would want to look ahead a little bit to see what was needed in that. So it does give, you know, all kinds of charts to fill in and it's just, it's a great, just very user friendly way to teach elementary science and it's really fun for the kids. Here's a little bag of the materials that they sort of sent with it. You can, sorry, that you can see kind of that they include. I don't think you can see that very well. I'm sorry, but it does have 
everything and it, it's all labeled too so you know what it is just in case it might be something that you might not be familiar with um i'm not a science guru so there might be things in there that i might not be familiar with um of course my husband as i said before is a is a science guy so he helps a lot with any science that we do but those are just fun kits to use again i'll leave a link below for those i do not know how much they cost or the frequency of it like i said we bought them several years ago and i just kept all the stuff so that when my girls got older we could just reuse it with my girls so those are the items that i use primarily for ella for homeschool curriculum for third slash maybe fourth grade um, like i said it's nice to have flexibility and be able to adjust curriculums to the needs of your child and to the needs of your teaching so one of the things that you you know that we have to be careful not to do is limit ourselves to checking off all the boxes if we have a teacher's guide and it says we have to do all these things we don't necessarily have to do that. We need to do what's right for our child in order for them to learn what we think they need to learn. And because different kids learn in different ways and have different styles of learning, that means that that may vary from child to child. Ella happens to be a child who likes to do worksheets and likes to do writing, so um, she doesn't mind doing more than one worksheet about something. My youngest child is not that kind of child, so for her, she wants to do, you know, as little writing and drawing as possible it's not really her thing so we definitely have to you know choose to adjust when necessary and that's the nice thing about some of these curriculums so don't don't allow yourself to think that you can't use a curriculum because it has a lot of seat work absolutely you can if it's the right way to teach your child then use it and then pick and choose which things you think are best to use as reinforcement activities for the learning that your child is getting so thanks so much for watching today. I hope this has been useful. I'm sorry if I've been a little out of it today. I've been a little bit under the weather. I hope that you will come back and watch future videos. I am getting ready to do a video on if a Disney cruise is really worth the cost. And also I'm going to be obviously doing a video for the curriculum that we have used for our youngest child, Emma, who is technically a first grader it's you know it's again one of those things where by public school standards she's in first grade but I'll definitely show you what she's been learning and what curriculum we've been using and how we've been doing that so make sure you come back for more content we are so glad that you're here remember to give us a big thumbs up don't forget to subscribe and this is your last chance to leave us any questions you have for us about homeschooling the kids would love to answer your questions. Eric and I would be happy to answer any questions you have for us as parents. So please leave those questions in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. If you haven't followed us on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, please be sure to do that. Though All those links are down below. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see y'all real soon.